Now, Fox 16 Sports with Ben Creighton. It's a simple but challenging task. Win two games in the span of eight or so hours against two different teams, and you get to go dancing on the diamond. That was what the UCA Bears faced coming into the final day of the Southland Conference Tournament, looking to make it to the NCAA Tournament for the first time since 2013. Allen Gum squad going up against Southeastern Louisiana in the semis. We'll pick it up in the third inning. Bears down 1-0. Not anymore. Jay Anderson, base knock into right field for an RBI single to tie this one up at one. An inning later, Tanner Wiley at the dish now. This is going to be ripped down the right field line and check out Bo Orlando showing off the wheels on his horse from first. He's going to get the wave home. Here comes the play at the plate and Orlando slides in safely to give UCA the lead over the Lions 2-1. He's amped up after that big RBI. Southeastern Louisiana though would take the lead. The Bears would then tie it up in the seventh and this would be decided in extras in the tenth. The go-ahead run on second. Tyler Smith chopper through the hole into right. Here comes another play at home. Jay Anderson beats the throw. The catcher can't hang on and the Bears retake the lead 4-3. to three. But you know what's even nicer than taking the lead? Getting some insurance runs. Cole Fiore. This blooper over the second baseman's head will bring home two more Bears to go up 6-3 to three on the Lions. UCA would advance to their fourth Southland title game in the last seven seasons as they beat Southeastern Louisiana. So, one game will decide the conference title and who goes to the NCAA tournament. Bears now playing Mackney State. Goose eggs until the fourth inning. Bo Orlando opposite way past the first baseman and UCA strikes first in the championship game. one nothing lead over the Cowboys. Bottom half of the inning, Julian Gonzalez. Comebacker right at the pitcher. Christian Brasher hauls it in, but the throw is too late and offline. That'll bring home the tying run. Fast forward to the seventh. Cowboys now up two to one. Clayton Raspberry jam, but base hit up the middle. That'll bring in one, and that will bring in two. A four to one Mackney State lead. The Bears would cut the deficit to two, but that is as close as they would get. So close, but a heck of a season from the Bears. Mackney State heading to the regionals with the 4-2 win. Losing stinks. There's no question about it. And it's understandable how some Hog fans aren't happy with Arkansas's early exit from the SEC tournament. There is obviously worry about the team losing five of their final seven games heading into the regional. But, you know, we can always look at the bright side. Remember last year's Razorback squad? You know, the one that came one out away from winning their first national title. They only made it to the conference semifinals. So not winning the conference crown doesn't mean the sky is falling. Plus, you have to add in the great run Connor Nolan has been having on the bump in the last couple of weeks. Coming into yesterday's matchup with Ole Miss, the freshman held a 1.52 ERA over his last six outings. Yesterday against the Rebels, Nolan only gave up one earned run over those five innings pitched. Mixed in a few change-ups as well, uh, two different breaking balls, fastball with some sink, um, you know, got some ground balls. When he works ahead in the count, he's really, he's really tough to figure out if you're a hitter. So um, I feel like he just continues to get better and better. I just think my work's been better. My bullpens have been more, um, I mean, just better work. I'm throwing harder in my bullpens and uh, just working on stuff that I'm going to translate into a game. And that's really been reflective of my outings, and uh, it's helped a lot with uh, you know, just get, making better stuff available for me during the game. Meanwhile, it wasn't a great night for Matt Crone, and the Hogs' closer wasn't able to hold off Ole Miss as the Rebels were able to take the lead 3-2 to two after he came out of the pen. Dave Van Horn said Cronin was a bit off on Friday night. He's better off throwing the ball up in the zone instead of knee high. And uh, both those pitches that were hit hard were, were down in the zone a little bit. They were good pitches, but... Um, yeah, it's just, just the way it is, you know. They, they got good hitters. Those guys are veterans. I mean, those, those are their dudes. They hit one and two in the order. You know, you have to gear up for his fastball. I mean, he's got a great fastball. Um, you know, like you said, he's gotten me a few times. But today I just got a fastball that I could hit and happened to put a good swing on it. But uh, he's going to have a lot of success here. And then uh, you know, I think he'll be a major leaguer one day. Meanwhile, on the hardwood, Eric Musselman continuing to add to his staff up on the hill. Today, announcing the addition of Clay Moser as an assistant coach. Moser spent the last seven seasons with the Los Angeles Lakers and worked closely with two familiar names, Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. 
Musselman and Mosier coached together with the Golden State Warriors and Sacramento Kings back in the day. The new head hog saying of his new assistant, quote, Clay is an incredible X and O coach, and he has been at the forefront of basketball analytics. He loves player development and brings the NBA experience that our players look for and will soak up, close quote. All right, that's good news for sports. Stick around. Much more when we come back.